I have to go check those out. Yeah, you do. I'm laying down because my knee is just blown up. It's I still have to ice it. Process out. Thanks to you. I was doing yoga a couple weeks ago and I, it just popped really loud. And then now it just wants to keep going out and I'm in physical therapy, but I don't have another appointment. I had an appointment last week and it kind of got better, but now this week it got worse. So next week I'll go, we'll just have to figure out a plan. Oops. That was me. Sorry. <laughs> have they tried taping? Yeah, it, it is taped. It's okay. still. I probably didn't do as good of a job taping as she did though. So there's that, but let's, let's not, I'm not going to worry about it though, because that's <laughs> our topic. Worry about We're not worrying. That's right. I'm just going to be sitting here laying on my couch icing. Um, but let's get into this. Yes. What's the hot topic? It is a hot topic. Worry, 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 worry. And it's a very human thing to do. And it's also a very non-productive thing to do. It can really take us down a rabbit hole. You know, we can go to a deep, dark place with worry. Um, so earlier today, we were talking about that. And someone brought up the idea of using worry as somewhat of like a cue or something. So when you're worried about something, you can catch yourself and go, oh, yeah, I'm worried about this. Well, what does that mean? Am I not prepared for a speech I'm going to give? Um, you know, something like that. And we can, instead of being the victim of worry, you know, where we get caught up in that, we can take control and we can make some changes, change direction or do some more things um, so that we are successful and we can let go of the worry. I mean, we're all going to worry, but we don't have to hang on to the worry because that's that's what gets us in trouble, hanging on to worry. Wouldn't you say, Leah? Yeah, definitely. I think that um, what gets us into trouble is when we were talking about this earlier, like when we we're younger, you know, in our 20s. We're always worried about everything, worried about who our friends are, worried about where we're going, worried about if this guy is going to call me, you know, and then it's obsessive, right? And it just becomes all consuming. And we know people as adults who are like that, they let something just consume them. And what we want to do is go, yes, that's happening. This is happening to me. So how can I let it go or just put it to the side or not let it affect me? Because worry really um, weakens you. It's, it's a weakening emotion. We want to empower ourselves. We want to stay strong. And with worry, that's where we get weak. In fact, to, on tonight's class, we're going to talk about say, hey, key and how worry is part of that, you know, your, your third eye, your psychic, your, your spiritual sense. When we're worried, it's usually up here. And how when we can expand our mind through meditation, through Reiki, now, you know, the problem might still be there, but now in an expansive mind, it's not right in front of us. Now we have space where we can like try and figure out what's happening. Um, but I think that the, the biggest thing with worry is like you said, to acknowledge it, maybe journal about it, you know, because a lot of times when we're worried, it's all me, right? Me, me, me. I'm worried. It's me. Even if we're worried about someone else, it's how is this affecting me? How, how am I doing this instead of, wow, I'm really worried. Okay. What is this bringing up for me? Is this something, you know, from my past is this like, like sometimes, you know, we get worried, um, about, okay. Like from, with my son, when he makes stupid decisions, I'm like, oh my gosh. And then I get worried because it's like, oh, he's done this before he didn't learn, you know? And so of course you go into that worry trap instead of saying, you know what? I trust that he is going to do the right thing. I'm just going to send him love and light. It's his life. All I can do is say, hey, maybe think about this. But if he doesn't want to take my advice, I have to accept that and be able to move on, right? And to let it go. So I think that journaling is something that is really important to do when we're worried to ask those I questions. You know, why am I worried? Why is this bothering me so much? Um, I'm feeling very distracted by this. Why, you know, just ask yourself this why, 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 and get down deep into the root of the problem. Cause a lot of times we want to put it on someone else 
Like, oh, my son is worrying me. My son is making bad decisions. Well, my son isn't doing anything to me. He's just living his life. It's me that's deciding I'm going to take this worry on. And now I've made it a thing. And that's really what we do to people. We like put our emotions on them and, you know, oh, he's doing this to me. And then I make a story about, oh, Cody always does this to me. And he's always, you know, but that isn't the reality. That's just my perception. And that's the story I want to tell myself. So with worry, it's, it's really important for us to, to realize that it's not about us. It's about something else, right? We're, we're like bringing a whole bunch of baggage into this and then to journal about it, try to let it go, but also to acknowledge it, right? Because don't you think, Jamie, that when we try to go, oh, well, I just won't worry about it, then that creates a problem. Absolutely. That can be um, just a way, an escapism. Of yeah. Problems, you know, so you don't have to take responsibility if there's something that needs to be dealt with and you can just say, oh, well, you know, I'm not going to worry about it. It's like just um, letting go of it and you're not dealing with your responsibility because we are, you know, we are responsible humans. And when we have a challenge, it's up to us to look at it and do our best to try to solve those problems, um, but not get so wrapped up in it. I think that it's very empowering when we look at worry and let go of it and try to address what we need to address, or when we detach from people with love, you know, we're really good about worrying about our kids and our spouses and those people that are really close to us. And then we want them to do something our way, but when we can detach with love and it doesn't mean being cold or angry, it just means I love you and I'm going to allow you to make your own choices and, you know, just giving them that freedom to be themselves. And sometimes that can change everything. I think the energy of that, like the energy of distrust comes into play. And then the energy of light, when we can just send light and love that really changes things. Just like, you know what? I trust that you can handle this. Like that empowerment is really, really um, important because what we say a lot of times when we're worried, we're saying, oh, I don't think that you can do this. I don't think that you're capable of doing this. Um, you don't have the skills. I, I know better than you, you know, and that's not the truth. We had, we came to where we are today by making mistakes and doing what we have to do. So we have to allow others to do that too. But sometimes like if we're worried, like let's say about finances, that's a hard one, right? Because that one is, oh my God, this is happening to me. And so, um, I don't know, Jamie, I don't know if you want to say something about this, but I have a way of dealing with that. Um, yes, absolutely. And it's easy to get caught up in that. And I mean, we we have to pay our bills, you know, we have certain responsibilities. So it's really easy to worry if you don't have enough money coming in, or you don't know where it's coming from. But as we start focusing on the lack in our life, we're creating more lack. Um, and we just get caught up in this vicious cycle. So what I do a lot of times when I catch myself spinning out of control, it's like stop, and I just stop. And I have, I force myself to change the direction of my thought um, to something positive, something totally different, you know, than the money. It's just stop. Okay, you, you are fine right now. Everything is okay. You have a roof over your head. You know, you're healthy. You have food. Um, you have so much more than many other people and start to look at what I'm grateful for in my life. But a lot of times it's constant when I'm really worried about something, it'll be stop. And then I start doing that. And then the next thing I know, stop, and then stop, you know, and I really have to take control of my mind because it wants to go back into that cycle and I have to stop it. Yeah. It's like a worried mother, right? Our egos are like worried mothers and they're like, oh no, or you got to worry about this. You got to worry about that. But worrying doesn't get us anywhere. But yeah. if we can like, you know, what I like to do too is um, this just happened the other day. I was like, well, um, there was, there's, oh, I have dental bills and I'm like, okay, these bills are expensive. What am I going to do? I don't have the money right now 
to pay these. So, you know, I could teach more classes. I could borrow the money. I could get a 0% finance credit card. You know, there's all these different things I can do. And once I start figuring out these are the ways I can address this, then I start having space and then I can start feeling more positive. And then it's like, okay, there, I do have choices. I could get a part-time job. There's things I could do to help myself out of this. And once you start doing this, then you're telling the universe, you're looking for a way. And then pretty soon you're going to start finding different pathways to a solution to your problem. But it's really, I mean, it sounds woo woo, you know, the law of attraction and all that, but it really is. And there's scientific study that prove this, that when we're negative, then more negativity comes. When we're positive, the more positivity comes. And in fact, I had this really cool thing happen. I got a ticket a month ago or so. And um, I was going, he said I was going 77 and a 55. I don't think I was, but regardless. So I got the ticket and, and yesterday was court. And so I'm like, oh crap, I have to go to court. You know, this is going to be, it was an hour away from my house and it, you know, it, it had to be at one 30 and I was like, oh, this is like half a day thing. And I'm like, okay, you know what? I just, I'm going to give this to God. I'm just going to go. I'm going to take some work. I'm going to do it. And so I got there and they're all like, oh, just plead guilty. And, you know, here's, here's a little thing. And you fill in the form, you plead guilty. And they go, oh, we'll give you a trial date six weeks from now. So it's like, oh my gosh, this is fantastic. And then I also got written up for a broken head or, or a, a, a tail light that was out, a brake light that was out. And so I'm like, well, I got to get that fixed. And I took a wrong turn and there's a Jiffy loop. So I just zipped in there and the boys changed it for $11. But, you know, it was, I quit worrying about it. I was like, no, I'm just going to go. I already told the universe, this is inconvenient. I would rather not sit at court all day. And then everything just fell into place and everything worked out. But it's when we can let go of that, I'm gripping to a certain outcome. I'm gripping to this. This is the way it looks to me. And we can just be open. We talk about this a lot in Reiki, like when you grip to an outcome, you're attached to something happening a certain way, nothing can get in. But when we're open, it's like, okay, I have this ticket. I need this thing done, but I'm just going to be open to whatever is supposed to happen. And then I had the best case scenario. You know, um, I was able to get out of there and be home by two 33 o'clock, you know? So it was really wonderful. Um, and that was even after getting my tail light flicked. So I think that when we can let go and just trust, that everything is going to work out for us. I think that that makes a huge difference. Absolutely. I think that's really, really important. You know, the, that we have trust in the flow of life um, and just allow ourselves to be in that flow of life and trust that everything is going to work out and trust, trust in ourselves, you know, because sometimes um, the negative self-talk that we do um, is really harmful, you know, but we are good enough. We are strong enough. We are capable. We're, you know, we're all still here on this planet. So obviously we've been doing something right these past years. And I think that's important that we remember that, you mm -hmm. know, that, that we are quite capable beings, and we've shown it time and time again. And sometimes it helps, especially if you journal, um, just to go back and look at some of the times when you were successful. You know, um, maybe we can think about it, but I really think like when you journal, you, you write that down. Like today, um, I, I went in and asked for a raise. I was scared, but I asked for it. And then look back over your journals and say, I did that. I did that. And you see your successes and that builds your confidence and lets you know that you're quite capable of conquering anything um, and getting through anything, you know, that you're worried about. So there really is no reason to worry because remember who you are inside. Oh. And what's the worst that can happen, right? You know, there's, there's, you're not going to die. Um, you might have a challenge, but there's always solutions in, you know, the problems. Mm -hmm. We're always presented with problems, but there is a solution within that problem. But when we're worried, we're up here and it's, and you can't think straight. So when we can give ourselves that space 
of saying, okay, I'm not going to worry, right? That's why the precepts come in for today only, do not worry. And now all of a sudden, when you say that, now you've got a little bit of space. And if you can meditate, you can get further and further and further and further. Now you can look at the problem and say, oh, yeah, and now I can see where a solution lies within that problem. But when it's right here in your face, you can't, it's like, it's like when kids tell you to read something and, and they put it right in your face and you're like, oh my God, I can't read that. That's like how our problems are with worry, right? They're right in our face. We're like, oh my God, I can't even see anything. Just like, oh, okay. Oh yeah, now I can read it. Now I can see. <laughs> now I can figure this out. <laughs> Cracks me up. My nephew will do that. Look at it, sissy, right in my face. I'm like, oh God. I can't read that. <laughs> this is old. <laughs> uh, but you're so right. That's a great way to look at it because that's really what we do. We get that worry right up in our right, face. For her. We can't see anything. We can't see a solution. We can't see anything. Well, and it's like um, we get overwhelmed by our emotions. So, so like, you know, we've talked about this and we're going to talk about this actually tonight, Nancy and and Darlene and Darlene knows Kokoro, but you know, when our, our heart and mind are out. So in Japanese, Kokoro means heart and mind. There is no separation for heart. It's just heart mind. And so when we're out of balance, we become like too emotive when we're down in our heart. So if we're watching about Ukraine or we're watching about the animals, you know, or we're with an animal that where it seems terminal, we're too much here. So now we're completely out of balance. Whereas, you know, our Reiki practice meditation can help bring us back into that balance where we can say, okay, you know, yes, this is bad, but I am going to send light and love because you always have that. You're never helpless because you can always send light and love. And if you know, you can do something that also helps you let go of worry a little bit more. You know, it's like, I can't, I mean, of course that's so overwhelming to that problem. Um, and I always suggest if you, if that makes you really super sad, you can't get on top of it. Don't watch the news. Don't even go there because it's like drinking poison, right. And expecting somebody else to die. It's like, you're just poisoning yourself with these things. So if you can't send love and light, then don't put yourself in that pathway of worry unnecessarily. And that's hard because we want to see what's going on with Ukraine. But at the same time, it's really overwhelming. And so we have to really kind of be cognizant of where we are. Is this, can I, can I safely send love and light and feel good? Or am I looking at the news and I'm just getting upset and, and like spinning, right? We all know that feeling. I don't know if you want to say something about that. That's a good point, Leah. You know, sometimes we have to be so careful. Um, what we allow in to us, whether it's, you know, what we watch on TV, what we listen to, what we read, our self-talk, all of those things matter mm -hmm. and they will play a role in whether we are able to really be in our practice and live by the precepts. Um, they can make it really easy or hard, you know, depending on what we're allowing in. And in our culture, let's face it, there is so much stuff out there. Um, it can be hard to choose, like, I only want the positive things in, right? Because what do we see on TV? They have all these reality shows and there's got to be drama and fighting for those to be popular. And we have our politicians being horrible and nasty to each other. And mm -hmm. I mean, everywhere you turn, that's what you see. And so I think it's just really important that we get very careful about what we let in, because we talked about that earlier, the Kodadama, how words have power mm -hmm. and negative words have power and positive words have power. So why wouldn't you want to choose the positive is what I think, but not everybody does. What's well, like that Indian proverb where you have two wolves on your shoulder and one is angry and one is kind. And then which one are you going to feed? If you feed the angry one, then that's what's going to become more powerful. If you feed the kind one, that's going to be more powerful. But we all know people who listen to news like Fox News and they have all and they're getting all this negativity and then they're reacting negatively, right? They have anger issues. They have you know, um, they're, they're spewing and, and it's just not healthy when you're constantly feeding in 
that negativity. And especially if you're already worried about your own life, why would you invite in more problems? It's like Alfred Hitchcock says in one of his movies, with trouble at the doorstep, why drag it in, right? So why would you allow that into you it, when you don't have to? You can just leave it alone, leave it out there. Don't listen to news, only listen to happy stuff. I mean, just ever since COVID, I can't watch uh, serious stuff, like serious movies or like crime. Uh, it just affects me too deeply. So I watch like Finding Nemo and, you know, Schitt's Creek and things that I can laugh and, you know, not take too seriously. Yep. Absolutely. It makes a big difference. I mean, when I worked in law enforcement, I was in law enforcement for 13 years. I went to crime scenes and I know how it affected me. Um, but I was really into the serial killers. So I watched all that stuff and I was just fascinated with it until actually I went through this grief recovery workshop and I found Reiki about the same time. And after, after that workshop, which was, I was taken up in the woods for four days and they kind of broke us down um, and we went through a lot of stuff. And then you throw in learning Reiki on top of that. And I, I left that workshop knowing I can't do this anymore. Mm -hmm. I am never going to be able to walk into a crime scene and put up a wall again. And I can't not go into a crime scene and not put up a wall because I'm not going to be okay. I'm not okay now, but I'm really not going to be okay. And mm -hmm. shortly after that, I was in a different career because I knew I couldn't stay in there. Yeah. When you finally wake up, it's yeah. it you can't you no longer can operate the same exact way. So Nancy and Darlene, since it's just the four of us, do you want to say anything about this? Do you have anything to add? Nancy looks so comfy. She does. <laughs> well, uh I think when something comes up that um what that I would more normally worry about I just I as quickly as I can I shift into making a plan mm, I so, love that and and I don't know if that's probably you know partly something you learn I've learned professionally because people come in and you know they're they're hurting and they're concerned and they're, uh, you know, and, and I, I always acknowledge what they're thinking and what they're feeling. And then I go, well, then let's make a plan what we're going to do, you know, about that. So I think yeah, I've, I've, you're a fixer. You're, you're a I've doer. done that for so many years that I just, you know, tend to do that. It's not, sometimes it's easier than others, but right right no absolutely but but that that doing can help us feel better mm -hmm. when we're doing we just have to always be careful that we're not you know because i like to do that with my son and he's like oh you don't have to fix this mom yeah i don't i don't i'm like you with my son i don't i don't do any of that you can't because it, it's like you can't have a relationship with them if you do that no. right my mom was like that with me. Yeah. My patients have chosen to come to me. Right. For a right. reason. So they've given me permission. Right. So, uh, and it's, it's a joint thing. You know, I don't just tell them what we're going to do. We work it out together. But so what do you do when, when something happens in your own life to you? How do I, you then? I do the same thing. I sit down and, and I look at it and I go, okay, well, so now what are we going to do? <laughs> so, you know, I try to kind of uh, not overreact, you know, because that's not going to do any good. That's right. You won't get anywhere. You just the squirrel caging. You'll just keep going round and round. Absolutely. So I breathe. I do a lot of deep breathing. <laughs> and Ricky, right. of course, you kind of have to. Yeah. And so, you know, and then I just, I, but I do, I don't journal journal, but I write, I'm a kinesthetic learner. So oh. I write down everything. Mm -hmm. um, so that's I'm always great. processing through. Writing. Oh, that's great. That's wonderful. What about you, Darlene? <laughs> 
for me, you know, when I worry, I just internalize it until I pretty much combust, you know? <laughs> which I know is not healthy. And uh, so I'm uh, working on that and just try when something comes up just to, you know, kind of, you know, take a couple deep breaths, mm -hmm. you know, just, you know, try to pull back from it for a little bit just to kind of evaluate whatever the situation is that's got me worried and, and, and just try to, to at least put the pieces together to see if I can come up with a plan to, to make it so that I'm not worried about it. I mean, cause there are things that, you know, most things that I worry about are out of my control. I mean, I, I, I don't worry a lot about stuff about me except for my health, but that's a whole nother story. But um, so I just try to uh, just focus on, on me, just like breathing and figuring out how I can, how I can get through it without letting it consume me. I mean, that's. Yeah. And that's hard sometimes, yeah. like, especially I know that you went through recently, you know, with your animal passing, with your dog passing, and that's really hard to get on top of. It's very, that's why we turn to other people to help us. When I was going through a really hard time in my life, then I had friends who did Reiki and could meditate and hold space for me. Cause you have to have that when you get underwater with your emotions and with worry. So I think, you know, journaling and then breathing, I'm glad you said that because really just that space of when we take in that deep breath and just calm our mind, calm our breath, calm our body, right? And then we can go, okay, now I can look at this. Absolutely. And that pause when you're breathing is so important. You know, you take in that deep breath and that pause because everything goes away. It seems like for me anyway, in that pause. Absolutely. I agree because it gives you that space again. Right. So anything you can do to just calm yourself, anchor yourself and then give yourself space. Mm -hmm. Sorry. I've got the yawns today. I had the hiccups earlier and now I've got the yawns. <laughs> You know, it's like now, you know, it's like I just get worried about, I mean, you know, everybody's heard about the the mass shooting that we had here in Sacramento. Right. And it's just with that and the fact that, you know, there's road rage is out of control. It's like you're hearing stories, you know, every day, you know, it's like road rage, you know, people getting shot and it's just freaking nuts. And it's just, I just get worried about, you know, even, you know, driving down the street, you know, yeah. it's like, I, I, I get worked up into this little mini panic attack before I go anywhere anymore, because I'm just afraid because, you know, where these incidents have happened, it's areas that I'm driving through. It's, and I mean, chances are it happening again in that same spot or, you know, few and far in between, but just the fact that, crap, I was just in that intersection, you know, two hours ago. And it's just, mm -hmm. so I just get worried about, you know, what's going on with all this gun violence. And, but then it's like, okay, I, I don't have any control over this. I can't mm -hmm. do anything about it. Why am I getting worried about it? But it's still just. It, well, we talked about that with Kelly this morning. Like she was saying, she goes for a hike in the woods and then somebody was saying, oh, aren't you scared? to go alone. And she's like, I didn't even think about that. And so it's, it's really, it's like, if something's going to happen, it's probably going to happen. You know, you hear about that too. What's really always freaks me out is like, you'll hear the story. Oh, I, okay. There was like a couple that was at the Mandalay Bay when the shooter was active and they survived that only to then, and it was a couple get in a car accident a mile from their home and die. And you think, oh my God, you know, I guess when it's your time, it's your time. And if you even sneak by, God goes, nope, you got to come. So it's, it's, I think we have to just say, you know, surround yourself with love and light. I always like put Archangel Michael around my car, like Archangel Michael in front of me, behind me to the left and to the right and just protect me and all around me. And that makes me feel good. Like when I drive anywhere, I do that. 
It's like, I just say to protect my car and protect me. Cause you don't know, you could be driving and all of a sudden somebody slams into you. You could be walking down the street on the sidewalk. Somebody could slam into you with a car. You could be anywhere. I mean, we're, we're in a very, we're very vulnerable. We're human. We're vulnerable. So I think that just reminding yourself all is well, and it's not going to happen to you. And, and if it does, then it does, but don't, you know, don't worry that it will because chances are it probably won't. Right. But what, what is it? They, what is, what's that statistic about um, single women over a certain age, you're more likely to get killed by a terrorist than get married or something. I mean, is this really sad statistic? And, you know, but that's really what the odds are. The odds of you getting shot are very small. I mean, of course it's rising all the time. We have it the same in Portland people there's drive-by shootings all the time. Like the, the parks are always getting shot up mm -hmm. and you just think, well, you know, if it's my time, it's my time, but chances are it won't be. And, and you can't live in that fear because then you're giving all the power away to those people and you no longer have power over yourself or how you feel or, you know, how you're going to operate. And that's really debilitating when you feel helpless, then that's when you, it, things can really spiral, but you're not helpless, Darlene. You're strong and you can do this and you can go get in your car and it will be fine. And just remind yourself all is well, yeah. all is well. And, you know, we're just living in a time where people are really out of control for mm -hmm. a lot of people. I mean, we have that here in Vegas too, yep. uh, you know, and I, every time I leave my house, I just invite the angels in. I ask them to surround it. Um, mm -hmm let no crimes be committed. And I used to just say that now I say, or even attempt it because one night I was in bed and the dog started barking and going crazy and they wouldn't quit barking at the bedroom door, which, and I'm like, oh, you knuckleheads, you know, it's like, well, let's go outside because maybe that'll shut you up, run around the yard and then come back in. I need to get to bed because I have to get up in the morning and they wouldn't even go outside so I'm like, now I have to walk out in the yard. And I walked out there and there was a guy there breaking into my house. And I think I screamed some obscenity. I'm sure I did. I don't even know what came out. And I ran back in the bedroom and I'm calling 911 and my heart's racing. I get put on hold. And then all of a sudden, it just, everything changed. And it was just this peace that came over me. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to talk to the dispatcher. She's like, okay, I've got three cops on the way. Um, you know, one's there now. Uh, two, two, just two more just arrived. They're checking the perimeter. You're the safest house. And I'm like, well, then I better lock my dogs up and put them in the kennel so they're not, you know, causing problems with the office. And there was just a sense of peace that came. Um, I just knew that I was going to be, I didn't even know if he was in my house, but I just knew that everything's okay. I'm at peace. Um, everything's going to work out. And now when I leave the house, I say no crimes be committed or even attempted. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Did they catch the guy? No, no, he didn't. He just smashed up my door and, you know, caused problems. Financially. In the back, the back sliding back glass door. Yeah, the black, the French doors, he was trying to break oh. in French doors. So, and then I thought, okay, French doors are a weak section. I have one in my bedroom and one in the living room. So I need to put some security doors on there. So mm -hmm. I did that, you know, so there was things I could do to make myself more secure. Mm -hmm. um, but I just remember in that moment when I was so panicked and I didn't think I turned to Reiki. I don't even know what I did. I just know there was this moment of clarity and peace that came over me. Well, do you think it's because you had a practice and you did your practice that in that time of need, it just kicked in? And I think that was it. Cause at first I was like, I don't have anything. I don't even have a big crystal to hit him over the head if he comes in here. <laughs> and you have this little teeny dog. You don't have a big pit bull. No, My, little, yeah. You know, little ankle biters. And it's like, oh, I feel vulnerable, but then it just, it's like, nope, nope, all's well. Yeah. So yeah, I have yeah. a little short story. It was, it's just, I just, it just has made me laugh all week. So last week I have a patient come in for an initial evaluation 
and he's uh, got a problem uh, with his foot. So he's laying on the table and I'm, you know, looking at the foot and doing measurements, range of motion and all that stuff. And I see uh, a leather sh knife sheath sticking down out of the, the top of the bottom of his shirt. And, <laughs> you know, so I go and I flick it, right? I just flick it with my finger and I go, so I'm doing this, right? And go, oh, is this a knife sheath? And he goes, yes, it is. And I go, is there a knife in it? And I'm still flicking it. And he goes, yes, there is. He says, would you like to see it? And I'm going, oh my God. I mean, I think of all, one part of my brain is spinning around going, thinking of all of the company policies that are being broken because somehow or the other, this guy has walked in to a clinic with a knife, right? Mm -hmm. And then the other half of me is going, oh, good Lord, he's like my cousins. I mean, my cousins, just they're just in love with weapons, you know, knives and guns and bows and arrows and all of that stuff. And so I just sort of switched my brain and said, yes, I would like to see your knife. So he pulls it out and it really was quite beautiful. And then we segued into talking about families who hunt and fish and the knife went away and <laughs> I just go, oh my God. <laughs> but you know, what are you gonna do? Yeah, you can't you know? make him feel judged either, right? No, you absolutely know. not. There's no way because for him, that's, this is probably his prized possession. Mm -hmm. Now he, he has wanted a knife like this forever. And it's part of his, the way he lives his life. And I didn't feel threatened at all. I mean, but, but still there's that other part of my brain that's over here going, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> so, well, in Oregon, you get that a lot. Oh yeah. Yeah. You don't get that in California as much when we go to Florida sometimes and you go out to eat with Kristen and her, her other, you know, partner, and he's got a gun in his back of his pants there. And you're just like, okay, yeah, okay. You know, you just, I know I'm not against guns. I'm not, you know, I can shoot really well. I just don't have a gun, but just cause I'm scared to death. I'm so klutzy. <laughs> Drop it and it go off. Yeah. yeah. Dog. Yeah, no, it's, and I think that, you know, and that's another thing too, that, that worry of like going back to what Darlene was saying, you know, there's so many people out there, they're angry, they have weapons. I mean, we don't even know day to day when we pass people who's armed, who's not, we just have to know that all is well. Cause even if I got shot and died, I would think, well, I'll just go join my dogs and I'll be happy. And that's not a bad thing. You know, I've got a good life. Um, but you know, it's, it's like that attachment, right? Oh, I'm so attached to living. I'm so attached to living here and suffering. Oh, attached to this. <laughs> Don't take me away from this. <laughs> right. Cause you know, we just get attached to this earthly form when we're energy. So we're making that transition and we're just changing none of us really know. It's like a big surprise, I guess, for um, when the, our time comes. We know we're not getting out of here alive, uh, but. Right. Right. We hope we don't get shot in a road rage incident, but, yeah, you know, it's not our decision. It's just, you know, so if we can go around just being loving and kind and being the light, you know, just like that's why this practice, it helps us to go inward be the light and just shine at the sun. Like, right. Like I love Nancy's story because she was just being the sun. She was just shining on this guy. He probably felt really good. He probably felt really safe with her. Mm -hmm. Right. He didn't feel judged. He felt safe. He felt, you know, accepted, heard, right. That's all people want is they want us to be seen and heard and accepted. Mm -hmm. And so I think that that's a great story because you did that for that man. And now we know if he's going to go on a rampage, you're probably not going to be one of the ones he gets. He's right. probably going to remember that Nancy was kind to him. Right. And that happens. Like mm -hmm. even like the Columbine kids, you know, the kids that were nice to them, they let go. And you hear that a lot on these shootings, sadly, 
that the people that were nice are the ones that get saved. And so we, we just have to remember that, you know, go around life, being kind, being loving, being, being the light for others. Even when you feel like your light is really dark, if stuff's happening in your life, just think about all the positives because nothing makes you feel better than helping somebody else or being kind to somebody else or showing, and nothing can help you let go of your worry faster than gratitude and being kind. You know, if you can do just a kind thing, even like a donation or like adopt, you know, like a, a, a dog on the, on, you know, at the humane society, the monthly thing or at a rescue, there's all kinds of things you can do to empower yourself so that you're not consumed with worry. Cause let's be honest. Oh my gosh. I love that little guy. Yeah. He's so cute. Oh my gosh. Look at that face. So pre- what's the dog's name, Nancy? That's Gandhi. Go- oh, Gandhi. <laughs> <laughs> he's from uh he's a rescue out of texas well how did he get that name gandhi well you know uh my uh the the ladies that are that make up our, our reiki circle down here yeah some of them are uh empaths and some of them I mean, have all of these wonderful gifts. And uh, so one of the gals actually was his foster mother. And so when I asked if she was going to keep him or could I adopt him? And she says, no, you go in and adopt him. So I started, you know, kind of soliciting names and seeing what people thought he should be named and stuff. Well, come to find out there were five of us that engaged in the activity. And at the end, we all independently chose Gandhi as his name. And so then she tells us that's what he told her his name was. You guys independently each picked Gandhi? Yeah. That is like weird. Like who would ever pick that name? Oh, I know. Well, see, I started it, right? I mean, you know, and uh, and I just, I was just going through all these boy dog names and there was, and Gandhi was there and I go, well, that's weird. But I go, but I know, because what I did is if I noticed the name, I wrote it down. You know, if I, if I didn't notice it, I didn't write it down. So, and then the other ladies also wrote it down. And then the empath or the, the, the medium or whatever, she, the animal communicator said, he said he wanted his name to be Gandhi. Okay. And I wonder if he picked it up. Like when you guys were all saying Gandhi, Gandhi he was like, oh, I like that. No, she, she, uh, she's that. He told her that before we. No, I know. Oh, be, before you guys met. Yeah, he and she didn't tell us. So we were. So his energy is strong. He he got into all your brains. Yeah. My name is Gandhi. He did the Jedi mind trick. Yes, he Gandhi did. is my name. <laughs> Gandhi is my name. <laughs> look at that look. I know he's adorable. What kind of dog yeah. is he? Well, that was another because <laughs> there's a lot of dog people in this group as well, and so. Uh, my my friend who's actually a breeder and a, and an AKC uh, confirmation judge she thinks that he is like a miniature cholo oh. uh so the mexican hairless dogs but they right. some of them have hair so he has hair uh but if you look at his silhouette and you compare it to the the, the cholos with hair that you can pick up on the internet uh, his silhouette matches and the, this uh, coloring here, this dappling on the chest, mm-hmm. the, the cholos have that as well. So, but I it's just an interesting little face. Yeah. So I just go with the terrier mix because yeah. Oh, he's really cute. He's very cute. He is adorable and he knows it and he doesn't look worried at all. No. Uh, well, hey. no, not when he's with me, he is not worried. But, oh, that's nice. But he, when he came, he was afraid of everything. Yeah. So that's uh, nice that you got him past that. Well, yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> let's just recap really quickly. You want a journal. Mm-hmm. We want to do the precepts for to combat worry. We want to do the breathing like Darlene suggested. Mm-hmm. Make sure that you're doing that breathing. And then there was one more. What is the other one? Oh, do acts of kindness. Yes. Acts of kindness and look for solutions and look for solutions. And that's where journaling comes in, right? Because you can get those solutions. Mm -hmm. So we're getting down. Should we do a meditation? Yes. Let's, 
do a meditation. Would you like to lead it? Yeah, yeah. sure. I'll, I'll try and conjure up a meditation for all of us. I feel like I'm doing a spell. What am I going to conjure up? Okay. So we will just, <laughs> woo, hocus pocus. Boom. All right. So let's go to <laughs> Nancy. Let's go into God show. I think I'll just do my one that I love my favorite one because it gives me grounding. So let's just set our intent. I'm open to receive whatever it is that I need most at this moment in time. And since we're creating a really beautiful circle together, let's just take a moment and put people, animals, situations into the healing circle. Knowing that all who join us will receive support. Whenever you're ready, you can put your hands over your hara, over your belly. And we're just going to do some Joshin Kokyoho breathing, breathing in through your nose, pulling your breath down into your belly, into your hara, deep down in there and expand the belly, hold for a moment and then release slowly out your mouth or your nose. Just a couple more breaths, breathing in through your nose gently, pulling it down the center line of your body into your belly, expanding, and then slowly releasing. As you release your breath, you release all tension in your body, any stresses from the day. Feel yourself become lighter. Your breath becomes easier. I'd like you to imagine when you pull your breath down into your belly, that you ignite a little light within your belly. And on the out breath, as you breathe out, feel the light grow brighter within your belly, breathing in through your nose, touching the light. And on the out breath, the light starts to come up into your belly with each breath in and out, feel this beautiful light filling you up, going down into your legs, into your feet, coming up into your belly, up into your heart, keeping your breath gentle. This light is a part of you with every out breath, it grows stronger. Now I'd like you to start releasing your breath out your body. So as you breathe in, expand your belly. And then on the out breath, feel your breath seep out your skin and into the space around you. With your breath, goes your light. So every breath in, connect with that light and every breath out, you push your light outside your pores, every cell of your body and into the space around you. Start to become the sun in this beautiful space your light becoming brighter and brighter. This is your own unique light. It can be gold or white or purple or green. Whatever light you see, this is your own beautiful essence that you're born with. Just feel your light becoming brighter. Feel your light connecting with all the other lights in, in this beautiful healing circle. Together we form this beautiful circle of light.
see this light and imagine all that are within it, feeling supported, feeling our love. There's so much power in the healing of a group. I'd like you to bring to mind bringing in difficult situations like the war in Ukraine, the animals, the people. Bring in Mother Earth into this beautiful circle. Bring in the whales, the dolphins. Now to help enhance and support this beautiful healing circle we've created, I'd like you to take a moment and invite an animal, an animal that makes your heart expand with love. This could be an animal that's here or an animal that's past. Feel them joining you in this beautiful healing circle. Feel their light enhancing ours. Feel your heart expand with love as you greet them. Feel the power of their love. We are all so much stronger together. And in this space, we are all one. We are one with our beloved animals. We are one with those who are suffering. We are one with the earth. In this beautiful space we've created, we can deeply understand oneness. And in this beautiful space of oneness, all is well. Our light and our love seep into the darkness. We bring the energy of all as well. In this beautiful circle together, we banish all fear, all anger. We replace it with love and joy, compassion, Just take a moment and feel deeply the love of this circle, the love of all who have joined us. Now I'd like us to give thanks to all who have joined us. And just slowly start to bring yourself back, but keeping that expansive feeling of love and joy in your heart, the warmth of your light, the knowledge that all is well. Whenever you're ready, you can go into Gasho. And just bring yourself back.
Oh, Leah, that was beautiful. Thank you. I always like creating that healing circle because it's so powerful when we're together and we just bring our lights together in that oneness. That's such a powerful space. And for me personally, I just always feel so much lighter. I feel grounded, but I just feel lighter. It just makes me more hopeful too, that we always have something to offer people. Yes. Yes. Very nice. And Cookie said, thank you. All is well. Oh, Cookie. <laughs> Cookie. So glad she could join us. I know. Me too. So, well, I know you ladies have to run. We do. We have to get to class yes. and learn all about say hey key and letting go of worry and attachment and that's, all is well. That's the wonderful thing about our classes. We go even deeper than what we talk about on Facebook. Absolutely. So Absolutely. Enjoy your class, ladies. Thank you. Thanks so much, Jamie. Yes. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Bye. 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 Bye.